Thank you very much for that beautiful song. It's a form of prayer, and the prayer is, Precious Lord, take my hand. I hope that that kind of prayer is in our hearts this morning. And let us pause for a moment as we worship our living God, and let us pause to pray for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray for peace and let us pray for the second coming of Jesus Christ. 
that all of us will be ready. And as we worship him this morning, let us whisper a prayer and say to the Lord, may joy and peace be experienced by each one of us. Shall we bow our heads for prayer? Father God, help us to have an awareness that we are worshiping you, our creator, our sustainer, a God, a powerful God, yet full of mercy and grace. We gather together in this place, O Lord, to give glory to you and worship your holy name. May your presence be felt at this very moment. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Who wants to join the choir? Who wants to join the choir? That's the very topic that I'd like to bring to you. And it's my prayer that we will all be inspired. Who wants to join the choir? I'd like to invite you to open your Bibles to the book of Second Chronicles. Let us start reading from verse 1 of Second Chronicles chapter 20. Chapter 20, we'll be reading up to 22. Shall we start now? It happened after this that the people of Moab with the people of Ammon and others besides the Ammonites came to battle against Jehoshaphat. Then some came and told Jehoshaphat saying, a great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea. From Syria and they are in Azazon Tamar, which is in Jiri. And verse 3, Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim a fast throughout all Judah. So Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord and from all the cities of Judah they came to seek the Lord. Then Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O Lord God of our fathers, are not God in you, God, not God in heaven? And do you not rule over all the kingdoms of nations? And in all your hand is there not power and might so that no one is able to withstand you? Are you not our God who drove out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and gave it to the descendants of Abraham, your friend forever? And he dwell in it and have built your sanctuary in it in your name, saying, If disaster comes upon us, sir, judgment, pestilence, or famine, we will stand before this temple and in your presence, for your name is in this temple, and cry out to you in your affliction, and you will hear and save. And now here are the people of Ammon. Moab and Mount Seir, whom you would not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and did not destroy them. Here they are, here they are rewarding us by coming to throw us out of our possession, which you have given us to inherit. Oh, our God, Will you not judge them, for we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us, nor do we know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. Verse 13 says, Now all Judah, with the little ones, with their wives and their children, stood before the Lord, then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Hazaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, and the son of Mataniah, a Levite, the sons of Asaph, in the midst of the assembly. And he said, Listen, all you of Judah, 
and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, Do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow you go down against them, and they will surely come up by the ascent of Zeus, and you will find at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Israel. You will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourselves, stand still, and see, and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not fear for or be dismayed. Tomorrow go against them, for the Lord is with you. And verse 18 says, And Yusapat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah of the inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed before them, worshiping the Lord. Then the Levites of the children of the Conanites of the children of Korahites stood up to praise the Lord, God of Israel, with voices loud and high. So they rose early in the morning and went out into wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Yusapat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God. Believe your prophets, and you shall prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of holiness. And they went out before the army and were saying, Praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. Now when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, and others who had come against Judah. And they were defeated. So in our Bible reading, First, we have the idea of the coming crisis of Judah. The king was Jehoshaphat. Have you ever experienced a kind of crisis? They are coming. They are coming to get us. They are coming to enslave us. They are coming to make war with us. Who are they coming? They are coming. They have great multitude. It's the joint forces of Ammon and Moab, and others. And what was the reaction of Jehoshaphat upon hearing of the great crisis? So imagine, my friends, that now Jehoshaphat is facing something that is hard really to do. And that determined as a crisis. I don't know if you also experience some crisis in your life, that as if no, sol no solution at all, as if that you don't have resources to solve that kind of crisis. And what was the reaction of King Jehoshaphat upon hearing of the coming attack? You look at chronic Second Chronicles 23, 4. Of course, upon hearing of the coming crisis, of the coming attack, the reaction of Yusapat, he was so afraid. He was so afraid. I can just imagine the countenance of Yusapat. And because he was so afraid, the first thing that he did, he set himself to seek the Lord, the whole Judah, come and seek the Lord. Notice of that, the first action upon meeting the crisis of life, he seek the Lord. Who was Yusapat? According to the commentary, Yusapat was a king which is known to be expert in war. 
And when the news received that joint forces are coming to make war with them, Ah, Jehoshaphat did not say, no problem, because I have the resources, I am expert in war. No, the first thing that Jehoshaphat did, he set himself and seek the Lord, and not only himself, the whole Judah, the whole Judah, coming together and seek the Lord. Now, that's a beautiful line for us to know. Mount View College workers, students, are you now in crisis? What's the first action that you are doing? Are we the same with Jehoshaphat? I cannot make it myself. I don't have strength to fight with this crisis, with this problem. Is the first reaction that you have seeking the Lord asking help from the Lord and you know you notice that it's not only himself all people of Judah so when this campus this Mountain View College or maybe you in your personal life you have problem you have your problem in your family you are not praying alone there is power in the corporate prayer summon all together to pray together and if you are part of the community, don't say, and I'll just see what will happen. Let them pray. You are summoned to pray. The secret of Yusapat, he called all Judah. Later in the verses, even children, even uh, all members of the family, little children and wives, they join together in prayer. And it's not only ordinary prayer. He called for fasting and prayer. Fasting and prayer. Now when they assemble themselves in the sanctuary and asking, come join together. We have the facing the great crisis. We don't have the solution of this problem. It's so great. Now let's come and let us pray. Not only just an ordinary prayer with fasting, not telling God of your helplessness. Then we come to 2 Chronicles 25 to 12. When they were now assembled in the sanctuary, Jehoshaphat stood up and started leading in the prayer. And you know, in these verses, Jehoshaphat enumerated the goodness and help of God in the past. Oh God, you promise. And you know, when I look back in the past, we also experience some pestilences, wars, and you have helped us. Why Jehoshaphat enumerated all God's goodness and deliverance in the hearing of all people of Judah? Why refresh themselves with the goodness of the Lord in the past? I'd like to, to share a very beautiful quotation of the importance of testifying and refreshing yourselves in the past. It says, sir, feeding your faith, it will starve your doubt and fear. Feeding your faith, it will starve your doubt and fear. You can feed your faith by refreshing to your minds God's goodness. That's why the Bible is telling us, forget not all the benefits. Are you the recipient of God's goodness? Now you are facing another problem. You don't know what to do. And you look back, repress all the good things that you receive from God. And then tell God, God, if you help me in the past, surely you'll be helping me today. Lord God, here are the joint forces. They are coming to attack us and we cannot make it. And you know, before we had also problems and we prayed together and you help us. If you help us in the past, surely, surely you'll be helping us today. Students, do you have problems today? Look back how the Lord helped you. 
refresh in your minds the goodness of the Lord. Pause for a while. Think of the goodness. If you are struggling today, you are now seated there and you are struggling, you don't know the solution of your problem. So reflect for a while, the Lord God helped you in the past. Mountain View College, are you facing problems today? You know, the one that inspired us always, we have many, many stories of God's care and protection in the past. Have you heard about the giants? Have you heard about some, some crisis in life here at Mountain View College and the Lord intervened to that crisis? Have you heard about that? You know, it's an inspiration. Lord God, if you preserve, if you help us in the past, you help us financially, you help us in our territory, you help us surely. You'll be helping us today. All you need to do is refreshing your minds. Feed, feed your faith. When you feed your faith, you'll starve your doubt and fear. Are you the recipients of God's goodness? Had you experienced problems that seemingly no solution? And God came to your rescue. Shall we now say together, if God helped me in the past, surely he will help me today. This line, brothers and sisters, helped me in my life. You know, my life is not always smooth. I experienced so many crises. And you know what helped me survive? Lord God, you helped me. I had encountered problems before, hard problems before, and I prayed, and you helped me. And if you helped me in the past, surely you will help me today. Now, what was the result of praying together? Second Chronicles 20, 13 to 17. What was the result? Then there was a prophet among them while they were praying. And then the prophet stood up. The prophet stood up and it says, Do not be afraid. O oh, Jehoshaphat, O oh, people of Judah, you are so afraid because of the crisis. Now you prayed, you joined together, you fasted. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed because of this great multitude for the battle is not yours but God's. Amen. For the Lord is with you. The battle is not yours. Your battles is not yours. It is God's battle. Let God fight it for you. Don't just drive it alone. You cannot make it. Again, I'd like to say, are you now struggling financially? Students, you don't know what to do. Uh, can I make it? Your battle is not yours. Let God fight it for you. Let God fight it for you. How do you let God fight it for the, your battles? Second Chronicles 20, 20 to 22. You can fight your battle by believing in the Lord your God. Believe your God and you shall establish. Believe his prophets and you shall prosper. How you let God fight for your battle, it is by believing that he really will fight it for you. How you let God fight for you, the Proverbs chapter 3 verses 5 and to 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not in your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall fight for you. He shall direct your path. Don't ever make a compromise in fighting the battle. As if that you God cannot make it, you make compromise. As long as you follow the blueprint of God, don't be afraid because the battle is not yours.
as a corporate institution, don't ever compromise. As a personal individual, don't ever compromise. Because the battle is not yours. Trust in the Lord. Do not lean in your own understanding. Believe God. Believe the prophets. How God fought the battle? Meet the thousand expert enemies with fire in the latest, in the later part. Oh, upon the announcement to show that you this battle is not yours. Now you can fight the multitude coming tomorrow. Form a choir. Instead of God supplying all the weapons of war and sending more soldiers, the instruction was form a choir and let the choir meet the multitude, the expert of war, the soldiers of a neighboring countries, neighboring nation who want to invade Judah, let them meet by the choir. Who wants to join the choir? If you were there, do you want to join the choir? Ah, oh, we'll be meeting with people with sharp sword and with spears, and then we will be marching and be singing. Why God instructed that? Because God wanted them to know that the victory is not their own making. It is a testing of believing. That's why I said don't ever compromise. By logic, maybe you cannot make it, but if God instructed that, stay foot to the instruction. How God fought the battle of Jehoshaphat? The instruction was to meet the thousand expert enemies with choir. God's ways are different from our ways. But we have to believe. Now, I'd like to ask a question. Do you have some battles in your life? Let God fight it for you. The battle is not yours. You could let God fight it for you in your struggle. It could be health, it could be relationship, it could be whatever. Let God fight it for you. Take the promise of the Lord. Allow him to fight for you. Psalm 55, 22, cast your burden on the Lord. He shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. MVC, he shall never permit the righteous to be moved. He shall never permit the institution, righteous institution, who follows the blueprint to be moved. Let God fight those battles, your battle. Another promise is that in Isaiah 41, verse 10, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. Ah, I will strengthen you. Yes, I will uphold you with the righteous right hand. What kind of hand that God will strengthen us when you are now in crisis? He will uphold you with what hand, left or right? I will uphold you with my righteous right hand connoting strength. So, those of you who are in struggle, cast your burdens into the Lord. Claim the promise. Fear not, for I am with you. Recommit your life to God now. I would like to offer a very special prayer for those who are struggling at this very moment fighting their own battles. If you're an individual that say today, Lord, thank you for the message. 
I'd like to submit my problems to you. Lord, I cannot fight it. My, it's your battle. It's your war. I'd like to you to ask it, to fight it for me. If you are that individual, kindly stand where you are. I'd like to give, I'd like to offer a very special prayer for you. Those who are fighting, those who are struggling, faculty members, students, remember, fear not, for I am with you. Remember, fear thou not, and be not dismayed, for the battle is not yours, but it is mine. And it's only when you allow God to fight it for you. Now you could say to the Lord, Lord, fight it for me by standing. And I'd like to offer a very special prayer for you. Father God, oh God in heaven, we receive the news that in the enemies that we have, in the crisis of life, that even now that we don't know how to solve, we receive your message that it is not our battle, but it is yours. And you have advised us, fear thou not, for I am with you. You have given us the promise that you, when we cast our burden unto you, you will be helping us, O Lord. And there are your people now standing in your presence. They are now casting their problems to you. Give them peace and joy. Help them, Lord, that whatever problems, struggles that they have, he will be victorious. The same as what happened to the kingdom of Judah and Israel, that they become victorious against the enemies because you fought for them. Fight for them, Lord, today, those who are standing in your presence. I pray for Mountain View College, whatever struggle, whatever problems that we are now facing, kindly fight for us, Lord. Help us to reflect in the past how you help us, and today you'll be helping us. I know that you know each one individually who are standing now. Kindly help them, Lord. Kindly bless them. We are asking this petition because you have given the promise. Thank you, Lord, for helping each one of us. Thank you. Thank you. We are asking this all in the loving name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.